Coming up on today's show, Nissan scraps a potential $1 billion sale of its battery unit. The next-gen VW Beetle could be electric, and we go EV myth-busting. But first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, the 3rd of July edition of the EV News Daily podcast. Whether you're getting this on iTunes or TuneIn, or just the audio on YouTube, welcome along. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. If you are new to the podcast, and it's maybe the first couple of times you've listened, welcome along. There's room for everybody. The rest of us will bunch up a bit. First of all, we have to talk and finish off the big Tesla story of over the last couple of days. On Saturday, websites like Bloomberg announced that eight Wall Street analysts all agree they'll never do it. On Sunday, Elon Musk said, we did it. And then Yesterday, those same websites went, yeah, but you can't do it again, can you? Well, the latest numbers for quarter two have been confirmed uh, from the Investor Relations Portal at ir.tesla.com. Let's dive into them now and have a think about what it means, not just for Tesla, but the EV market as well, where you're listening around the world. Uh, Plus, in a minute or two, I'm going to reveal the exact number of Model 3 reservation holders still on the list who haven't got their cars yet. And I'll tell you why I had to ask the Oracle Ride the Lightning's Ryan McCaffrey first, but more on that in just a moment. Stay with me. Well, the first clarification worth making today uh, was just to counter all of those online articles which said that the Tesla Model 3, 5,000 per week, I mean, self-imposed deadline as well, by the way, which they hit, uh, was simply a burst rate and could not be replicated. Whilst you might understand if this week a few staff took a day or two R&R and we'd all uh, give them that, maybe this week it's going to be 4,500 cars uh, they make. The fact of the matter is the hardware is in place, the General Assembly is in place to hit that number. They've done it once. They will do it again. Maybe not this week. Sometimes after those big rates we see the following week just comes down a little bit. Uh, Maybe a supplier is late with something and it slows them down by a few hundred cars. Uh, But let's face it, General Assembly is now built. That argument simply doesn't make sense. But it's amazing how many people still, you know, they they said Tesla's never going to do it. And then when they did it, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But here's, you know, five reasons why it doesn't really count. It's like playing games. Uh, it's fair to say that in the past, Tesla has been guilty, if that's the right word, of taking the one day rate of production, multiplying it by seven and saying, well, in a theoretical week, we could hit this rate. But that point doesn't apply now. They made 7,000 cars in the last week. A reminder, 5,000 of those, over 5,000 were the new Model 3. Well, Reuters has a couple of interesting quotes from staff, and they don't name them, so something I've always wondered, this isn't like a dig at any particular news outlet, right? But if they quote somebody, are they real? I mean, are are, are news organisations thinking, oh, it'd be really good if we had a quote at this point in the story? Well, this person would probably say something like this. Or do they actually have to find real people? Because if they are, then wouldn't they put their name? And if it's on the subject, on the condition of anonymity, well, maybe that kind of makes sense. Anyway, I'm sure Reuters would never make up a quote. Uh, It is this. It was pretty hectic, said one worker. All hands on deck. Another worker, speaking after the 5,000th car was made, described the factory as a mass celebration. Uh, Reuters say one worker told them uh, that to meet the goal, employees from other departments were dispatched to parts of the Model 3 assembly line uh, to keep it running constantly. Brakes were staggered so the line didn't stop moving. Well, that's kind of obvious, really. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? On Twitter, I had to ask another oracle, uh, the gang at Inside EVs and Dominic. We know 7,000 was the top line. How many S and Xs are they making? So what does that leave uh, for Model 3? The answer, he replied back on Twitter, is 5031. 5,031 Model 3s made in the last week. That is a lot of cars. You turn up to a parking lot, there's 5,000 cars in it. It's a lot of cars. Uh, the other figure was 1,913 Model S and X. So, Dominic, thank you so much for your reply uh, really quickly as well. Uh, go check out the scorecard at Inside EVs uh, because they are, even with the, the ones they have to kind of guesstimate, uh, Wade's numbers are always super cool. And now, according to Tesla, Q2 production totaled 53 
thousand three hundred thirty nine vehicles in the quarter. That is a fifty five percent increase from Q one. It's the most productive quarter in Tesla history by far. For the first time, Model three production, which was at twenty eight thousand five seven eight, exceeded the combined number of S and X production, which was twenty four seven six one. And they didn't hold back on S and X production either. They say we produced almost three times the amount of Model threes than we did in Q one. Our Model three weekly production rate. Uh, more than doubled during the quarter, and we did so without compromising quality. Now, Tesla did say that uh, GA4, General Assembly 4, for the Model 3, was responsible for a fifth, about 20% of the Model 3s produced in the last seven days, uh, with quality from that line being as good as their regular GA3 line. Uh, We expect, say Tesla, we expect the GA3 alone will do 5,000 Model 3s per week very soon. Uh, GA4 will help us out get there uh, faster and then exceed the rate. Tesla expects to increase production to 6,000 Model 3s per week by uh, late next month in August. And now on to how many Model 3 reservations there are outstanding. Now, I'm no Tesla expert. This podcast covers all markets and all car makers. So I know a little bit about quite a lot, but I don't know the really in-depth stuff uh, going super niche. So when you want really in-depth knowledge, I would say uh, your go-to shows, if it's Tesla you're after, definitely Ryan McCaffrey's Ride the Lightning uh, coming up on its third birthday. I've been listening for years now. I think third birthday coming up for that. Uh, Trevor from Model 3 Owners Club. Uh, Rob from Tesla Daily is always good for things like the financial side. Uh, So Tesla revealed the exact number of outstanding Model 3 reservation holders. And it's something I've only ever heard in vague numbers before when they've been talking about it. Like, oh, it's over 400,000 and people are on its way to half a million. So I asked the expert on Twitter earlier, I asked Ryan whether Tesla have ever previously published the exact number. And uh, I guess with the time difference, it was kind of uh, 6 p.m. here in the UK, but it's probably like 10 o'clock in the morning at West Coast time. And he was straight back to me. Hey, Martin, uh, said Ryan, not quite the first time, uh, but you're right. They've kept it close, uh, close to the vest. Mostly, I believe last quarter they had mentioned they still had around, he used the tilde, around 450k reservations. Uh, the reduction now is obviously because they've delivered a bunch of cars. Cheers. No, cheers to you, Ryan. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that clarification. So obviously in the past they have done, but I've never seen Tesla or heard them talk about a specific number. It's been quite vague before, uh, but they have. Uh, Well, the remaining uh, net Model 3 reservations at the end of Q2 is 420,000. Now they've delivered 28,386 Model 3s, almost 30,000 Model 3s made and delivered and out, you know, in customers' hands and 420,000 are still outstanding. And then I read another thing today that the net order rate is gradually increasing. So as people have been making the press and people have seen that the Model 3s are flying out the door, uh, they are more people are now uh, putting their reservation in for the Model 3 than they can make. So that would imply in the last week more than 5,000 people have put their $1,000 deposit down uh, because the net rate is increasing. They're not even eating into it now. Uh, Good luck to everyone involved in that. I'm sorry about the negative articles that uh, everyone's worked really hard to uh, to hit those targets and then they just get bashed by uh, certain people, certain corners of the media. It's a bit of a shame. I think it's always going to happen because you never know what people's intentions are, even if they say it's different. You've got to wonder who's financing what whose agenda is what. Try and do a little bit of critical thinking every time you read an article. Right, moving on to uh, Magna. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Jaguar I-Pace. It's being made made by Magna Stair in Graz, in Austria. And Don Walker is the CEO of Magna International. It's the largest North American auto parts supplier, and he's been talking to the news editor of autonews.com, Lindsay Chappell. And he says this, and I quote, we've been working on electric vehicles for at least 10 years now. We proposed the electric focus to Ford 10 years ago and worked with them to develop it. It wasn't a ground up EV, but we took out the internal combustion engine componentry and made it a pure EV. We took the lead on bringing that vehicle to market. We also worked with Volvo about eight years ago to create an electric rear axle drive, and we've signed a contract to develop an electric vehicle for VW 
in China. We bring that project, the motors, the software, the electronics, the control of the gearbox. We have many years of experience. And so the article goes on. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Fascinating uh, to read from a company that isn't maybe top of mind for most people who could name you car makers, but not the people who actually make the cars for the car makers. Uh, of course, the Jaguar I-Pace, uh, it's a Jaguar being an Indian-owned Indian -owned company by Tata Motors, but a Jaguar, a British company. But the cars are made in Austria. And I, I will say again, so it's on the record, within the next two years, what are we now, July 2018, within the next two years, a car maker will approach Tesla to license their technology. Large or small, I don't know. But at some point, someone's going to go, you know what, we're missing out here. Who can we go to? Elon Will you sell us some technology? Will you get? Will you give us access to the supercharger network if we pay you? Can we buy some uh, IP from you? A little bit of knowledge, and I reckon that is definitely going to be a future revenue stream for Tesla. I don't think Elon is too precious, as long as they're making money and as long as they are increasing the amount of EVs on the roads. That's my prediction. Uh, right, moving on to Ford, as we mentioned them a moment ago, and Ford have tapped an EV expert to be their new boss down under. Well, the US auto giant Ford Motor Company says this article has signalled the start of a new chapter in Australia with the point of the appointment of the global EV executive Kay Hart. Uh, Kay will be heading up its operations down under, according to the Aussie website reneweconomy.com.au. In what could only be good news for Australia's flagging EV market. Uh, Ford announced yesterday on Monday, the 2nd of July, uh, that Kay Hart, most recently their global BEV manager, battery electric vehicle, uh, pure BEV manager, distribution and digital experience manager. She's the new president and CEO of Ford Australia and New Zealand. And that is a great thing because I'm so baffled by Australia. My sister lives there. So my sister left uh, the UK many years ago to go start a family. Uh, my brother-in-law works in the oil industry. So it would kind of made sense. He was commuting such a long way to get to work from the UK during like month on month off that they moved over to Australia so he could be a closer commute you know a few hours flight to his job and so I'm not massively familiar with Australia but obviously we've been over uh, to visit and in my tiny little simple brain you've got all the sun you need in Australia and why on earth has why, had every house got solar panels storage and an EV in the driveway. I, I don't understand how Australia is so far uh, behind and still burning a ton of coal to make that electricity as well. You've got all of this. You've got all of our sunshine as well. Well, Nissan has cancelled a potential one billion sale of uh, the electric car battery unit. Uh, it was going to be sold to China's GSR Capital, if you remember. I was talking about this, Japan's second biggest car maker. Uh, Nissan told us that the Chinese investment firm eventually lacked the funds for the purchase to go through. Now, the deal could not be closed by the end of last week, June 29th, uh, Nissan said, and it ended the process, according to Nasdaq.com. In August of last year, almost a year ago now, Nissan announced the sell-off of AESC, the Automotive Energy Supply Corporation. Uh, now, that AESC have their battery plants in the U.S., and here in England and Japan, and they announced they were selling it off. I thought the deal was a done deal because it seemed so certain at the time. Uh, they told Reuters that uh, GSR were paying one billion US dollars for the deal. Uh, a Nissan spokesman said the company still intends to sell their battery unit, but declined to comment on any prospective buyers. That is really big news, huge news, because we thought Nissan uh, by now uh, would be customers of AESC having sold that off. But uh, I didn't realise the deal hadn't. It was just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and they have cool time on it. So the batteries that you get in the brand new Nissan Leaf, the 40 kilowatt hour one, uh, they're not externally supplied. They are still Nissan ba Nissan owned batteries inside it. I thought it was a, a totally external supplier contract these days, but it's not. We'll watch that story. Well, two more to go, and a revolutionary new VW Beetle is under consideration. And if it's given the green lights by VW Chiefs, it's going to adopt a battery-powered EV powertrain, reports Rachel Burgess at autocar.com. Uh, well, the British magazine claims that Bischoff, uh, who works at VW doing the design work, had sketched out a possible look 
For the four-door Beetle's successor, if it ran on EV power, it's going to take them between two and three years to make the final decision. Before that, VW remained focused on launching a series of mainstream EVs, says Motor One. We're looking forward to the ID range. There's three of those IDs coming. They can't come quick enough. I'm a huge fan of VW, despite Dieselgate. Owned uh, two Golfs in my time. Very talented people work at VW, and I just think if they turned all of their attention to properly making EVs, they're going to make some cracking cars. The nagging doubt you have with nearly all automakers, apart from Tesla and a handful of others, is how seriously are they taking it? Chances are, enormously seriously, because all the work's being done behind closed doors at the moment, and they don't need idiots on podcasts questioning them. However... We'd like to have some cars, please. Right, finally, some EV myth-busting. Oh, this is fun. According to Go Ultra Low organisation, 42% of Brits wouldn't be sure if they could take an electric car through a car wash. I'm so sorry, world. Yes, almost half of people in this country don't know if you can wash your EV. Apparently, you can wash EVs. Uh, Some of the myths that uh, they say need busting is this one. Number one, EVs are slower than petrol and diesel cars. I'm not sure that's such of a myth anymore because there's so many of that cliche genre of drag strip Teslas. I mean, we've all seen like the first 50 that we watched that were kind of a novelty and then they just keep making them. And it's obvious the Teslas always... Like, we know how it how it ends. The Tesla always wins. Myth number two, EVs are more expensive to own. I'm not sure that is a myth, to be honest with you, because at the minute, the purchase price is so high that unless you do a lot of miles, okay, running costs are tiny, but if you're financing a brand new EV and you're only poodling around town, uh, EVs are more expensive to own. At the moment, they won't be, but I'm not sure that's a myth. Right, number three, EVs aren't readily available. I'm not sure that's a myth either. You can't walk into a dealership and look at a range of electric cars in a range of colours with a range of interiors, different battery sizes, and choose the one you want. You walk into a dealer and they look at you and go, no, 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 you want that diesel over there. And they will sell you hard on that diesel because they've got a lot of them that the factories have been pumping out and making because the factories have to work at capacity to be profitable. So they keep making the cars and then they register them and then they give, sell them to dealers, the franchise dealers, who have to put them on their lot and then try and get rid of them. These cars are pre-registered to bump up their monthly and annual figures. So the factories are still making them just without buyers. That's the difference to Tesla. You know, every single Model 3 that's being made for the next couple of years has a buyer waiting. And finally, the infrastructure isn't there. Well, I'm not sure if that's a myth or not, simply because I think the myth of infrastructure is something that should be challenged. Because with most EVs, you just don't need it. I mean, if you're doing long journeys, you want to know where you're going to be charging, and that's really important for your peace of mind. But nine times out of ten, or even 95 times out of 100, you're charging at home. Well, that's our news for today. Thank you for bearing with me, because yesterday was kind of taken over by um, Elon tweets. Uh, However, uh, just a few thank yous that I've been storing up, but I really want to say thank you to so many people who have been uh, subscribing to the podcast lately and getting involved in the podcast. Thank you so much if you um, download the podcast from iTunes or TuneIn or Stitcher or any of those places, or even if you listen to the pure audio on YouTube, which I did once because somebody said, oh, I like to use YouTube for audio. Would you mind putting it on? I thought, yeah, it's going to get like three people viewing it every day and over the last couple of days. Yeah, it's gone down. It's gone down all right, actually, on YouTube. Uh, so that's super cool. Thank you so much uh, if you're enjoying the audio-only experience. Uh, thank you very much to Frank Parker for being part of the fun. Hi to Brian Smith and Philip Allen. Uh, John McIntosh, Francis Gregg, Andrew Parry and Kevin Kloinger have joined in. Hi to Richard Piper, Dave Miller, Jeff Moore, uh, Dean Gueva, uh, Rocky Beatty, and Rose Yeneva for being new subscribers to the podcast. Hi to Andy Dahl, uh, Philip Tynan, Kleiss, Klaus, or Kleiss, Nykander. Hi to Jens Christiansen. Hi to Raj Badwell and Ben Painer. And finally, thank you to Dean Hall and Vincent Lloyd Henry and Aaron Springer, Ryan Donovan, uh, Dana or Dana Pearson, and John Sullenberger uh, for uh, subscribing to the podcast just in the last few hours. I hope you do enjoy uh, listening. You can subscribe so you get it every single day on your podcast platform like iTunes or Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn Stitcher, or even YouTube. And of course, the WordPress blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you do subscribe, you're going to get it first before anybody else. You're going to get it free and you're going to get it automatically. And if in return for me doing this work, you can leave a little review. That would mean an 
a heck of a lot. Uh, in the meantime, catch up on the socials by searching EV News Daily on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you tomorrow.